He's Ram Devineni, founder of Ratapalax Films and Magazine. He produced, edited, and directed the feature documentary The Human Tower, which premiered at Docs Barcelona. And recently, he produced The Russian Woodpecker, which won the Grand Jury Prize at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival. He's the co-creator of the augmented reality comic book Priya Shakti, which received the 2015 Tribeca Film Institute New Media Fund from the Ford Foundation. I met Ram when I was at Cross Video Days last year, and I had in mind that he for sure will be presenting today. So a big round of applause for Ram Devineni. Welcome to Interdox. Um, my name is Ram, um, the creator of Priya Shakti. We're going to just start by playing the first clip. Priya Shakti is an innovative multimedia project that addresses attitudes towards gender-based violence in India and around the world. Hindu gods and their moral tales are integral to the Hindu majority in India and the Indian diasporas. Priya Shakti provides a new narrative and voice in the mythological canon by placing the goddess Parvati and a mortal woman who is a rape survivor at the center of the story. Central to Priya Shakti is an augmented reality comic book which uses a popular app to make animation, videos, and other interactive elements pop out of its pages. In our comic book, certain panels are animated featuring real-life stories and voices of Indian women who have survived sexual assault and face the ensuing trauma and social stigma. These pieces are short documentaries, but the women are animated in order to protect their identity. The comic book is available as a print and digital version and free to download worldwide at priyashakti.com. So I'm going to go through uh, the project and how this project, uh, which was started roughly about 18 months ago and launched just this past December 2014, is a great example of how to create an interactive social impact project. Um, the origins of this thing started, as many of you remember, in December 2012. Uh, there was a horrible gang rape that happened in Delhi um, on a bus. <clears throat> um, I was in Delhi when that happened and was involved in a lot of the protests that were occurring at that time. And like many Indians, we were horrified by what had happened and also angered by the indifference exhibited by the government at all levels. At one of the protests, I spoke to a Delhi police officer and asked him what he thought about what happened on the bus, and in particular to her. And he said something that got me started on all of this. He said, no good girl walks home alone at night. No good girl walks home alone at night. Implying that either she deserved it or she provoked the rape. And I knew at that moment immediately that the problem of rape and sexual violence in India and around the world is not a legal issue, but a cultural problem. So I began traveling around India, uh, speaking with NGOs, poets, philosophers, sociologists, and eventually interviewed rape survivors. And um, they kept telling me that they didn't have legal issues trying to get justice. They were just being discouraged by their family, their friends, the police officers, their community, and often their lives were put in danger by going public. Um, so I interviewed several gang rape survivors, and their testimonies are actually accessible through the augmented reality by scanning the comic book, and you can hear the actual uh, video stories that I did. But I'm going to relay, uh, relate one of the stories to you. One of the women that I interviewed when she was gang raped at 16 um, by a group of men, they actually videographed the rape and threatened her that if she went public or told the cops, they would release the video. So she went home that night, took a shower, burned her clothes, never got medical attention, and lived with the trauma for several weeks. And she only went public and sought legal justice 
when that same group of men raped another woman in a neighboring village. And she did get justice, but it took several years, and throughout that, horror, that, that entire process, um, her life was constantly under threat, her family was stigmatized, ostracized, thrown out of the community, and her father committed suicide from the shame. When I interviewed her three years later when she was 19, she was still being guarded by a police officer with a semi-automatic machine gun. Now, she's got to live the rest of her life under this threat of death from her community for trying to get justice. And just, just imagine trying to go to a dance or the mall or any public place or going on a date knowing that there's a cop behind you with an AK-47. What this does is it discourages women who are raped from, from pursuing justice, from going public, and it creates this vicious circle where certain men feel empowered to commit more rape because they know they can get away with it. Again, the shame has, was always put on them, on the women. So this is where this idea of Priya Shakti came from, was to create a new Indian superhero who is a rape survivor, the first superhero who is a rape survivor, who challenges and motivates her community to fight these patriarchal views. And this is the basic problem is right here. 34,000 rapes reported in India, and only 20% of them go, go, go to trial. That's the reported rapes. Now there's at least probably 10 times more that are not reported. So the first idea of this whole comic book started for me in going back to my childhood and using these old 70s films and remixing them into this new storyline around this idea of using Hindu mythology. And uh, I'm going to play a little clip of this. Uh, can you play clip two? Thank you. So this is, we used 12 uh, different films and re-edited them into this new storyline. New soundtrack, new voiceover. In the heavens, Parvati and Lord Shiva lived in complete devotion to each other. They lived in one of the three celestial planes, the heavens, the earth, and Shiva's realm. Shiva's third eye of destruction remained closed. The universe was in balance. There was harmony between the gods and the humans. But this was not to last. The slumbering rage of Shiva would soon awaken. One day, an earthly visitor came to Shiva's realm with terrifying news. The worldly realm of humans was being ravaged by an evil king. He came seeking Lord Shiva's help to stop the tyrant. <laughs> king Sriharna tormented the people in his kingdom. His soldiers raped the women with impunity. He dominated his subjects in every way. His people had no one to turn to. So the reason I, I chose Hindu mythology to really be the core of this, of this story is, um, you know, growing up as, as in India, one of the things I remember in Hindu mythology was always about conquering your fears. And we wanted to create a superhero who really is sort of a example of that. Um, so the first idea was to create a remix film. And I sort of showed it to friends and, and other people and wasn't really sure what to do with it. And literally at a story code meetup in New York City, I bumped into Dan Goldman, who is a comic book artist. And I showed him the video. And the he, first thing he said to me is, wow, this looks like a comic book. As you can see from the colors, the vibrancy of the story, it does look like a comic book. And then, again, I went back to my childhood and remembered reading these Hindu mythological comic books that were hugely popular in India in the 70s and 80s. Almost 100 million were sold worldwide. 
and they really influenced how a lot of children understood Hindu mythology, understood the great stories, understood characters from religion. And one of the common motifs that kept reoccurring is a villager would call upon the gods in dire situations. And I thought, what is more dire than the problem of sexual violence in India? So this is where it's transformed from a remix film into this comic book format. So the idea is, again, is to create a superhero, Priya, who is a gang rape survivor. And she calls upon the gods. She calls upon goddess poverty. And the goddess comes down. Shiva and all the gods get involved, but it's eventually up to her to motivate and to challenge her society and to challenge those patriarchal views. The core, we, we had sort of three, four, well actually number three, I said, I have to correct that, that's three threes. Number, we had four things we wanted to do. One, gender-based sexual violence issues needed to be addressed with sensitivity. Hindu mythology must be careful not to offend anyone, cultural traditions. The story must be well written and be very Indian, created by Indians for Indians. And we wanted to have social impact. So we partnered with an NGO called Apniap to help us bring the comic book and the story out into the streets, into the school systems. So the first thing that I did in this whole process is I started applying to labs and uh, markets and trying to really develop and hone the story and to look at possible ways of doing interactivity. I had this remix film. I had all these ideas of various other interactive elements that I wanted to do. Um, one, of the f one of the first that I went to was Doc Leipzig and we presented it there and immediately the response was overwhelmingly positive. They never seen uh, idea or a project like this. One of the really critical ones that I went to was Crossover Labs in, uh, in the UK. In, it was actually in Scotland. And there we started creating user models and interface models and really trying to create how a user would interact with, an, with a quote-unquote interactive comic book. And, uh, and they really helped me to, to create a survey design a special focus group, which I did, in which I went, I went back to India, went back to Mumbai and Delhi, and actually worked with, the, with, with, with high school students and teenagers in Delhi and Mumbai and field tested the comic book and to see, to get the response and the reaction, not only to the artwork, but to the story, and then some very rudimentary augmented reality stuff as well, which I designed at that time. One of the cool things that kind of came out of that field testing is we, just, we designed a comic book workshop, which we actually did in Mumbai, and we also did in New York City. So the high school students and younger kids would actually, over a span of a few days, create a one-page comic book based on social issues, in this case, gender violence. So within that time period, they would design it, draw it out, and then eventually we partner with Mozilla Foundation to turn the comic book into an interactive film, which then can be posted online. One of the things that I observed from these workshops is, you know, watching a film or seeing something online is a very passive act. But there's something very profound that I noticed when someone, uh, especially a teenager, draws a woman who's been raped or a woman who's been burned by acid, the actual process of drawing the story and the characters, you could clearly see it affects them and really motivates them. In the end, we ended up creating this curriculum which anyone in the world can download. It's called Comic Books for Social Change. So anyone can download it anywhere in the world and set up their own one-day comic book workshop for no more than the cost of paper and pen. So roughly about 25 or 20 euros. So the idea of augmented reality um, came to me kind of in the middle of all of this process, going to these labs and really developing this. And the idea of augmented reality came to me while I was in Rome at the Sistine Chapel. Um, as, as many of who, whoever attended or been there know that the artwork 
is, is quite extraordinary. And I thought to myself, this is like a, almost like a comic book, the comic book of life. And as Michelangelo was painting everything, he was very close up. He, could, he was literally a few feet away when he was painting. But as a viewer, we were removed by several meters. You know, we could, I could not see most, or in detail, most of the artwork there. And I thought there must be a way in which I can sort of enhance this artwork and get a closer view, and then also get a lot of informational elements that I wanted to know more about each story in each panel. So this, this is where the idea of augmented reality kind of formulated was there. So with that, I, I literally sent an email to one of the biggest augmented reality companies in the world, Blipar. I sent it to info at blipar.com. And within two hours, to my surprise, they replied back and said, this is brilliant. This is a brilliant project. We want to help you. We'll give you everything you want for free, no cost. We'll do all the work. To them, it was, it was, it was an enormous bonus because they were just opening offices up in India. And this was one of the first, actually, this is the first interactive project in India. And really the first utilization of augmented reality in the public sphere in India. One of, the, one of the amazing things that sort of developed from this relationship with Blipar is we started creating augmented reality street murals. And I'll, I'll explain the, the purpose behind them, but we'll play a, play a clip on, on how we went about creating that. Clip three. Again, these street murals is getting at the core of what we're trying to do with this project, which is to create identification and empathy for rape survivors, because that's the problem in India, is there is no empathy or identification with them. So the idea of putting our main character, Priya, on a tiger on the streets of Mumbai and Delhi, it creates a dialogue or discussion, especially when they're creating it, because this is a very common image. There's an image in India of Durga, the goddess, the ultimate goddess of, of, of feminism and power. And we reappropriated that image, and instead of putting her on there, we put a rape survivor on a tiger. So everyone in India knows this image, but they don't know exactly this image. When, when, when it's being painted, there's a, always a discussion that happens in the community about what's happened, what is this image, what does it represent. And for everyone, they always say this represents a strong, empowered woman. And, and the artists themselves lead this discussion about gender violence as well. One of, the more, one of the recent things we just did, actually just six weeks ago, is we set up the first augmented reality art exhibition in the United States, in New York City at City Lord Gallery. So you can walk into the gallery, scan any of the art. You can even scan the statue of Priya on the tiger, and animation and videos pop out of that. So we launched this project um, in December 2014 at the, at the Mumbai Comic Con, which roughly gets about 100,000 people coming out to it over three days. And immediately this project went super viral. We now have over 500,000 downloads of the comic book worldwide. We thought this was a very Indian project, but this project 
over half of those downloads are outside of India. And we're now up to close to 400 news stories worldwide on this project. Um, as I said, this comic book has gone global in, in a major way. Um, UN, the United Nations UN Women in February recognized the comic book as a gender equality champion, one of the first comic book characters to be recognized by them. A um, little slide on all the, this is 300 news stories I have to update, it's up to 400 now. And the comic book was released digitally in all of these formats, so you can go anywhere, you can actually go on BitTorrent, and if you want, you're more than free to illegally download load the comic book. It's free, so it's not a problem for us. Um, we printed about 6,000 comics for the Mumbai Comic Con, and they were given out uh, during the Comic Con. Um, I'll go into the, quickly into the funding sources on how this project was, was formed. Most of it came from grants and foundations. Um, we got a very big grant support from the Tribeca Film Institute New Media Fund, which really helped us out. Private donations, a lot of people would contribute to it. We did an Indigo campaign for the outreach. Although I went to a lot of markets, uh, I didn't get any funding from broadcasters because I think this is very untraditional for typical broadcasters who want to put something on their website or in an exhibition space or something like that. So everything was all raised in other, other ways. The cost of the project, everyone was paid making this. Um, the launch cost in Mumbai, the film production, me filming the rape survivors and editing and putting it together. And the big thing that we're doing now is the next stage of the project, which is school distribution and testing. This is the makeup of our team. Uh, Priya's the boss. I'm just, uh, we're all just humble servants here. And um, Lena Sarvasta, many of you know, in the interactive world, she was our impact strategist. It was very critical in helping to keep this project uh, genuine and honest and have a social impact element to it. So the next stage is school distribution. We're planning to do a test this, uh, this uh, coming uh, October in, uh, in Mumbai, Delhi, and Jaipur testing it out with hopefully 10,000 students, see how the comic book, book can work within the school system, creating a curriculum, and then the eventual goal is to raise enough money to do a million copies of the comic book, which will be given out for free in schools. Now, it's really designed, this whole project is designed for our core audience, which are preteens, eight to, eight to 14 year olds. In India in particular, it's a very critical age for them. They're understanding gender, gender issues, gender roles, sexuality, and usually by the age of 14, that's when they decide whether they're gonna remain in school or not. Um, so that, that is who we're really targeting with this, pro with this project. So um, one of the big developments is this comic book, it's only been released for five months, is, is we're in the process of actually getting it funded the World Bank wants to fund this project now, from now on. So it's, as I said, it's, it's gone and reached a level that none of us anticipated. And we're hoping, as we're after the school testing, that we'll have a clear impact strategy and impact outcomes. So um, with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Oh, that's the comic book. Thank you, Ram. Uh, time for questions before break. We have one. Just wait for the microphone. Just a moment. We have someone with the mic. Can just give the microphone to her. Have time for three, four questions because Ram was very fast, <laughs> which is quite good. Namaste, Ram. Thank you so much. Namaste. It's a fantastic project. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, India's Daughter documentary, which is just coming out, has had a huge uh, negative reaction in the traditional sector in, in India, conservatives. Have you had that reaction? And then my second question, I know that you're planning your impact strategy, but have you had any kind of uh, tool to measure the impact in the school kids that are re actually reading the comic books? Well, 
In regards to the film, uh, India's Daughters, um, I mean, the great, th I, the reason why this project works and works in a different way than that film does is, is basically that list that I gave you in, initially, our, our, our objectives. It was made by Indians, for Indians, about India. Now, it's an excellent documentary, but I think a lot of the backlash came from the mere fact that it was not made by an Indian. Because everything that's said in that documentary, everyone in India knows. You know, the rapist views and things like that, everyone in India knows that. So it was not a shock for them to hear that. It was more of a shock to have this Western kind of point of view from the outside reflecting on India. Um, so that's like, that was very critical for us. We wanted to make sure that this felt very Indian. And it is Indian. Everything in it is, is really designed for Indians. Um, so in regards to social impact, no, we, we haven't, other than the focal groups and small test groups that I've done, we haven't done a major social impact study on this at all. That's what our next phase of this whole project was. Our first phase was just getting the project out, getting it launched, getting people to read about it and get it inter interesting. More questions? For Ram? Yes? Here? From Alex? Uh, oops, great project, by the way. But I was just wondering what, if any, um, support you had from the Indian government and what their response has been like. Uh, actually, we have purposely avoided working with the Indian government in any way, um, not because of political reasons, but basically, if you have the stamp of the government on any project, it's just not cool. Like, any teenager knowing that the government's supporting this will run away from this in speed, you know? So that was the main reason. We didn't want any government involvement in this. And this is not just Indian government, but any other government in any other country. Um, it's a very independently run project. Um, and the reaction from the government, the second was the reaction from the government. We actually, there has been no reaction. Overall, this project has been properly and widely received, not only in India, but all over the world. The only criticism that I have ever gotten on this project was the mere fact that I didn't go far enough with the story and trying to focus on the perpetrators or their, get them getting just, the justice part. Which, you know, we're, we're working on the second chapter now, so we're really developing and flushing out the story and one of the things that, I, that, that we're doing with the second chapter, first off, it's going to be written by an Indian woman writer, a prominent writer in Mumbai. So she's going to be collaborating with me on that. This first one was all written by men, including myself, of course, um, who were motivated and moved by what happened in Delhi. But the second one, we know to really flush and develop this story and make it more concrete, and especially to develop Priya as a character, we needed to have a woman involved to write that story. So there's more to come. OK, uh, more questions? It's interesting to see how your project has really get the streets, I mean, change society. I mean, there's a strong social component, which I think it's amazing to be here today in the context of, of the conference. Uh, any questions from, yeah, wow, you are very far. So maybe we need 10 minutes to get there. <laughs> but. You are very kind that you are coming down. Thank you very much. Last question for Ram. And Hi. Um, if I understood correctly, in one hand, this is very Indian, and in, in the other hand, you want or oh, it's going global. So for me, uh, the question is uh, either there is a lot of Indian communities outside the India itself as a country, or there are other cultures that uh, also feel uh, identified with this sort of problems, despite it's not exactly their own goats, et cetera, involved. Uh, how is it going global? Uh, I, I actually can't explain the reason concretely because we really designed this project for India. But I think globally everyone identifies with this character Priya that we created. There's something really beautiful and profound about what she's trying to do to be sort of a guiding light, being a rape survivor and being a guiding light to challenge your community. And rape, you know, is not a problem only to India. It's a problem 
all over the world, gender violence, and this includes domestic violence and all kinds of violence, is a problem all over the world. So we've gotten enormous downloads in like countries like Brazil and Italy. Um, I don't know the numbers in, in, uh, here in Spain, but countries that we, we did not at all plan for, for marketing or anything of that sort. I mean, granted, getting like 400 news stories in like five months, every, all the media just fell in love with this project because there's so much negative stories about gender violence and India coming out that they were seeing a very hopeful, beautiful story of, of, of people trying to do something. I mean, I, actually, I'll, I'll close with this. One of the things I really want to emphasize is in those protests, there were millions and millions of Indians, including myself, who were out on the street protesting. So that is, there were the millions of Priyas that were out there who were, who were fighting for women's equality and to stop gender violence. So that is sort of the motivation behind this project. So there is a movement that is now happening in India. It is the new Selma, Alabama of the Civil Rights Movement, or the new Salt March, Gandhi Salt March. It started in December 2012. Ram and Judith and the other uh, keynote speakers from today will be around all the day, so you can just enjoy time with him and just change business cards, whatever. It's a pleasure to have you meet here. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much, Ram.